everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host, Jennifer. Today we are making a bee. <laughs> we're making this cute little bee. Now this bee is something I made for fun and her wings, yes, are crooked. But it's alright because this is for me. It's not a gift to anybody. It's not to be sold. This is just a cute little baby bee. Cute little baby bee. Cute little baby bee. Alright, so... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make a bee. We're going to wing this tutorial. There's not going to be any like math or anything like that. I'm going to show you how to make this bigger, how to make this smaller. I'm going to show you all of these things. You can make this smaller. You could use smaller yarn. I'm actually using a fatter yarn than I used for this one. So she, the next bee may turn out a little bit bigger. We're going to see. Um, the things that you are going to need for this yarn, the thing, the type of yarn that we're using. Now you can use blanket yarn like the bel the velvet, yeah. <sighs> Bernat blanket yarn. My mind went blank. I was like, what what is the name of the yarn? You can use Bernat velvet yarn or velvet. Yeah, you can use the Bernat velvet yarn or the Bernat blanket yarn if you want. Today we are using the Parfait Chunky from Premier Yarns. I just prefer per Premier Yarns. And this was made out of the Parfait Regular. So this is Parfait Chunky. Um, I'm using pink today because I'm doing a strawberry bee for my daughter. You can do yellow and black. You can do your bee whatever color you want your bee to be. You just need a lighter color and a darker color for the contrasting stripes. So today we're working with pink lemonade and bright pink. From the parfait the parfait chunky which is a super bulky number six and i'm also going to use just chenille this is the regular velvet yarn this is from the dollar store we're going to use this for the wings we may hold this double so we're, we're gonna i'm gonna wait and see and play it by ear and see what i prefer this I don't think this one was held double and those are really nice little sturdy wings. You're also going to need stuffing. So you're going to need the fluff to go inside of this and you are going to need some eyeballs. Now the eyelashes are completely optional, but the eyelashes is easy to achieve with just a regular worsted weight acrylic yarn or whatever black yarn you may have on hand. And you don't have to do black eyelashes. You could do blue eyelashes. My mom had blue eyelashes forever. So <laughs> you can do whatever eyelashes you want. Um, these are just, I think these are the 12 millimeter or the 15 millimeter eyeballs. I got them from Amazon. You don't have to use the safety eyeballs if you don't have any. You can also, you can crochet eyeballs and sew them on. You can like embroider eyeballs on. You can put whatever eyeballs on this that you want and that you're comfortable with. But I'm basically just going to show you how to do the body of the bee. And then I will show you how I make the face on this particular bee. This yarn suggests using a six millimeter hook. I am going to play that by ear and see what hook works because, and I want you to do the same. Um, this also says that it's a super bulky six from the Dollar Tree. There is a, there's a big difference in the thickness of these two yarns. And this one says use an eight millimeter hook. And this one says use a six millimeter hook. You know, this one's way thicker. So we're going to play it by ear and I'm going to see what I feel comfortable with. And then I will update with, with you which hook I'm actually using. I actually think I might use a 7 millimeter hook because that's one of my favorite ones to do chunky yarn with. But it could be 6, it could be 7, it could be 8. Whatever you feel comfortable with so that you can see the stitches. Because this yarn is difficult to see stitches. Like when you, if you do it too tight, you're not going to be able to see your stitches and you're going to just be frustrated. And so I want you to be able to see the stitches clearly without making them too big and gappy. Because if they're too big you will get stuffing that comes through the holes. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you all of that. And if you don't want to make it with this kind of yarn, you can make it with regular bulky acrylic yarn. It just won't be fuzzy and squishy like this is. So I'm giving you lots of options to make this your own, but like the bees are really popular right now. They're really cute. They're fun to make and they're somewhat easy. So I don't want to like scare you off of any of that. All right, so let's turn to the table and we will get started. 
All right, so because of the nature of this yarn, we're not going to do what I would normally do for a bee or for a a amigurumi. We're, I usually start with a magic circle, but the ends of this yarn tends to very easily just fall apart. And because of that, and because of the way this yarn works, it does not slip on itself very much. Like it sticks to itself once it's crocheted. We're not gonna do the magic circle like we normally would. We're going to do a chain three. So we are going to do a slip knot on our hook. Chain one, two, three, four, five, and in that very first, if you feel for the knot, that very first stitch, we are going to slip stitch. And you just need a little tiny bit of a hole right there so that you can work into that. So we're going to chain one. We're going to put six cro single crochets into this little circle we made. Okay, one, two, Three, four, and I'm crocheting over my tail. All right, so we got six, I believe. I'm going to slip stitch into that first. Now you're probably going to have to not be able to feel this, but you're probably, or not see it. You're going to have to feel for where your stitches are which is going to be frustrating to some people. I totally understand that. So we're gonna chain one and in that first stitch, we're gonna put two single crochets and we're gonna do two single crochets in each stitch around. There should be 12 by the time you get to the beginning. And if you see there's like a little whoop whoop that tells you there's a stitch there. All right. I'm going to slip stitch into that first chain, chain one. That is our first rows. And if you have a hard time telling where the beginning and the end of your row is, go ahead and put a stitch marker there so that you know that that's the end of your row. Let's see if I can find one. I know I have some on this desk somewhere. Oh well. Probably in here. Probably in here. I get this bag open. Wow, oh, it's tight. Woo wee. Stitch. What stitch markers do we want to use? To, well, we'll use the B because we're making a B. <laughs> that makes sense, right? So, by the way, this stitch marker my daughter made for me. There we go. All right. This next row, we are going to. Put two single crochets in the first stitch and then one in the next stitch and then two in this stitch and then one in this stitch and then two and then one all the way around. So you got two in the same stitch and then one in the next stitch. Let me pull some yarn out. This yarn is high friction, so it doesn't want to pull out of the ball very easily. But that's also a good thing because it doesn't want to unravel either. So that was two in that one. And it's okay if you have to pull your stitches apart so you could see where you're at if you like messed up or forgot. It's okay. This is going to be a stuffed animal. It doesn't have to be perfect. This feels like drastically different than the regular premiere. I actually like it a lot more. Let's 
It is a lot more squishy. One. Go. One. And now we have our stitch marker there, so we know that's the end of the row. We're going to give it a slip stitch. Chain one. Now the next row is going to be two single crochets in the first stitch and then a single crochet in the next two stitches. So single crochet, single crochet, two single crochet in this stitch, one, two, and then the next two stitches will just have one single crochet each, one, two, and then this one will have two in it, one, and then a single one in the next two, and then two in this stitch, and then over the next two stitches, there'll just be a single crochet in each one of those. When you're making anything in the round like this, there will be a pattern that you will see emerge and it will go two in every stitch, and the next row will be two, and then one, and then two, and then one. And the next row will be two, and then one, and then one, and then two. And then the next row will be two, and then one, and then one, and then one, and then two. So each time, the number in between the two stitches together will increase by one. So it'll be three in between the two and the two, and then four in between the two and the two, and then five in between the two and the two. So, it's very easy once you get the hang of it to make it look right. And this, this type of yarn is very forgiving for mistakes. So... If you make a mistake here and there, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Like here, I totally got my stitch count off because I kept talking. But it doesn't bother me because you're not going to be able to tell. As long as you don't mess up royally. Okay. So that's what it should look like. It's kind of a circle. Then I'm going to chain one. And again, we're going to do two in the same stitch. And then one, two, three, and then two together. Well, not together, but you know, two in the same stitch. And then one, and then two, and then three, two together, one. Two, three, two together, one, two, three, two together, now this is where the part of the customization is going to come in. If you want a small bee, like if you want to be around this big circumference, you can stop right now. Well, not stop, but you can uh, change the pattern right now. Or, like I'm going to do, I'm going to make a bigger bee. So I'm going to continue this working in the round. I added a stitch somewhere. All right. So you could stop right here if you like this circumference. This is what? Four inches across. So your B would be 
a diameter of about about 14 inches okay if you like that that's fine okay see that works it's about the size of this bee's face and then I started just crocheting in the round and it'll bring it down and around the body because I want a little bit bigger bee because I'm making this for my daughter and I, I want to give her a big bee. I'm going to continue with the same pattern of increasing. So this next row will be two double crochets in the same stitch and then four in between. So if you want to continue making this big with me, you absolutely can. If not, you can fast forward to the part where I start working in on the body. Three, four. I need to stop talking and start counting. <laughs> so it's two, two, three, four, two together, one, two, three, four, two together. I haven't decided how big I'm going to make this yet. So we're going to play it by ear as we go. How big I want to go. Like I said, you can make this any size. If you're working with different yarn, like if you're working the worsted weight yarn, your circle may only be this big at this row. So just keep that in mind. You're not doing anything wrong. And you can also tell like where your increases are because you'll get a little bit of a point. So you can increase here, here, and here, and around here, here, here as you do this. And it will, it will still add up to be the same doesn't have to be perfect, but you can even put stitch markers at the points here. And every time you get to that point, just put an increase and it'll keep going bigger in the round and you'll be fine. All right, so we got two here, two, three, four, there's two there, one, two, three, and four. Yep, that worked. That's an easy way. Don't worry about those points because when you start working in the round again, they, they will smooth out. You won't see them. I think using a big yarn like this makes Amigurumi a little more user friendly to people who are afraid to use or hate using or can't use tiny hooks and tiny needles. And uh, this bee is really simple because the only thing we're going to be sewing is the wings. Let's see, we got fluffs. Fluffs happening, but that was from it being dragged in when I showed you. See, now I'm off. I'm off frame again. I'm off frame. There. I just had to move my camera a little bit. I have one too many stitches here. <laughs> Maybe I have three too many. I think I have three too many. That's all right. It doesn't matter. It's still, look, it's laying flat, and that's all we hear about. The tripod is giving me difficulties today. All right, we're going to do a couple more rounds. I'm going to start with two double crochet. And now this row, we're doing five, or not double, single crochet. And this one, we're doing five single crochet in between the increases. You see that point is right there. So we got five. And then at the point, increase two single crochets. For me, moving the desk, I think it's against the wall too much. It is rattling, <laughs> rattling my uh, organizer against the mirror, making a tapping noise. It's driving me crazy.
Can't wait till I get far enough into the skein so I'm not having to yank it so hard. Seriously, it's like a lot of friction in there. Just keep on crocheting in a circle. Till this gets the size that you want. I got a knot. I got a knot. That reminded me of Charlie Brown. The Halloween one where he says, I got a rock. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Ready to increase in that corner. And like I said, you can make this as big or as small as you want. I think this is a good size for a bee face. So I think this next row, we are going to just start working in the round for a little bit. Of course, if you want to make it bigger, feel free to make this bigger. The next row would just be six stitches in between the increases. And the row after that will be seven in between the increases. I think we finally Got the right amount of stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Nope. That's right. Well, we'll fudge it. We'll fudge it. Don't matter. It's a tutorial to show you how to do it. It's not perfect. All right. So now we have the face is about five and a half inches. So the diameter, the diameter. It's not the diameter, is it? My brain's just like, oh, math, what, what are the right terms? The circumference. The circumference is about 18 inches. All right. So that's a good size. That's a really good size. It is a little bit bigger than the B. Yeah, it's a lot bigger than that B. That's all right. All right. So what we're going to do is this row, we are just going to, oops. My tripod. We're just going to do single crochets all the way around. We're not going to increase. We're not going to do anything at those points. We're just going to, matter of fact, we're going to move our stitch marker up to the stitch so we know that that's the round. <coughs> <coughs> we're just going to single crochet all the way around this bad baby. Single crochet. Single crochet, single crochet, all the way around. Okay, I'm starting to think this uh, parfait chunky was a good idea. It is definitely thicker and works way better, way quicker than the regular parfait. I am digging this chunky. Now watch, as soon as I get into this, and I'm liking this yarn for this kind of stuff. They're going to discontinue it. Because that is always <laughs> that is my luck. That is my luck. I'm going to take a break and go grab something to eat. Or not to eat. Something to drink. Because I have a tickle in my throat. Keep single crocheting. till you get back to that stitch marker. And I'll be right back. Alright. I got my water. <laughs> I caught myself up. I'm at the end of the row. I got a slip stitch to that first one. And you see how it's kind of rounded off the edges a little bit? And the more you do that, it's going to start to pull back this way, like that. So we're going to do another row, exactly the same as that row. We're going to chain one, and we're just going to single crochet. I'm going to move my stitch marker up. That's not in the way. I'm just gonna single crochet all the way around. 
single crochet all the way around. Now because this is going to be a strawberry bee, and I'm not going to add this as part of the tutorial, I was thinking about crocheting a little strawberry and putting it on the butt of the bee. Because I thought that would be so cute and I thought my daughter would love that. She is like huge into strawberries and mushrooms right now. So <laughs> I might have to make her a big mushroom too, but that will take ordering more parfait yarn. Although, let's be real, pink mushroom would be kind of cute. I also have purple over there. Purple would be kind of cute. I think she's turning into a little bit of a hippie. She's finding her girly side on top of it. There, you know, 15 is a fun age. Like, 15 is about discovery and exploring and learning and and really finding yourself. But that also can be like a difficult process. I, I was really, I was really miserable at 15. But I didn't have the support system that she had, like at all. I was the fat kid in the family and I was very, very criticized for that. And I was always made to feel like I didn't fit in, I didn't belong, I was different. And the other day we were sitting on the back porch and we were talking and she said, I don't know what to categorize my body is. To, to how to categorize my categorize my body. I said, first of all, you don't need to categorize your body. She goes, I know, but like, am I the kind of chunky girl? Or am I like the tall, fat girl? Or am I the skinny? The, not skinny. Am I the girl with big boobs? Like, am I? And I said, Juju, the reason you don't know how to categorize yourself is because we have never put any importance on that kind of thing. Like, I use the word fat in my house as a word. I don't use it as an insult. I don't use it as a demeaning thing at all. And when I call myself fat, like I, that's not me insulting myself or downgrading myself at all. All right, I got to the end. We're going to slip stitch again. We're going to do one more row, just a single crochet. Okay, I'm going to move this up again. And see how it's starting to curve around and a lot of people don't understand that because to them fat is just a nasty word and like fat being fat is like a nasty thing and gross fat like whatever but because like we've never we've never made that an important thing in this house she doesn't feel like she has to be categorized as the fat girl I'm like that's a bad thing that she's bigger than some of the other girls she doesn't look at herself and downgrade herself because of that I'm actually really proud of that because she has seen her mom in a bikini and she's not afraid to wear a bikini and my first bikini like my mom would never let me wear a bikini she was very critical of my body very critical of my body because my mom was a size extra small most of my life and both my sisters were stick skinny and not that there's anything wrong with that, but the fact that they were so critical on me that I was bigger than them, like I never want that for my kid ever. And I'm really proud that I've done something for her self-esteem that she doesn't go, Oh God, I, I hate my body. I'm so fat. I mean, she's a normal 15 year old. She does like wish some things were different on her body. Like that's normal. I just try to reinforce to her that she's beautiful just the way she is and she doesn't need to do anything. The only time I criticize her eating is when she gets a stomach ache because she's eating the wrong food because she very much has her mother's insides. Like There's a lot of foods that make her sick. And she refuses, refuses to try to give up some wheat to see if that is the culprit. She doesn't want to live the wheat-free life. I can't force that on her. She's going to have to make up her mind whether she's tired of being sick or not. I like working in a circle. It's very uh, relaxing to me. Especially when you get to the part where you're not counting anymore. Like the counting part can get frustrating, especially when you can't see your stitches. <laughs> but just working in a circle and not thinking about it is very relaxing to me. And we're at the end of our row. So we're going to slip stitch. We're going to check our size of our B. 
take that off because it's in my way. All right, so you see that the head is starting to form. It's starting to go around. So now we're going to put another increase row in. And the reason we're going to do this is because bees are not just tubes. Like, they're not straight. They are rounded and they're bulbous. And that's what... See how his body goes out a little bit? Like it just doesn't go straight and then go straight across. So you want to like build up a little bit of the back so it's more bulbous. So it's not just flat. So we're going to chain one. And we're going to put two single crochets in this first one. And then we're going to go across the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and we're going to put an increase, so we're going to do two single crochets in that same stitch, and the next seven, we're going to go across, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Trying to count so that I can keep track. I'm going to put two in that one again. But not loud enough so that I distract you guys from counting. Because I hate that. <laughs> so we're going to do the next seven. And then two. In that same stitch. And seven again. Should have put my stitch marker there. Click. And then two together in that stitch. And then seven again. Now you will be happy to know that I have finally reached the point in the skein where enough of the yarn is used up that I can just pull it freely and not keep yanking out pieces. <laughs> so we did two together. Right? Right? No? Did I? Oh well. Two together. And then across the next seven... And then slip stitch. Boom. Did it. Now, if you don't have seven here, it's okay. Like, it doesn't, if you if your stitch count is slightly off, it's not going to matter in the long haul. Just fill in whatever gap you have there and slip stitch. Or, like, if you have less than seven, doesn't really matter. It's not going to matter in the long run. Now we're going to do a couple more rows of single crochet in the round. So I think we're going to do two more rows. Move our B again. Let me turn you this way a little bit because I'm stretching out again. All right, so I had to <laughs> plug my phone in because we're running low on battery power. I had no idea what I was saying. All right, so... We're going to do two rows and single crochet. Just straight single crochet, no increases. Just all the way around.
get a drink of water. Just keep on single crocheting in the round. I have to keep an eye on my phone. Luckily it beeps at me when the battery is dying. <laughs> I had to plug it in. So my laptop is now right here. <laughs> it's underneath. So I can plug it in and get a charge going. Ah, uh, the joys of being a podcaster. This is what I get for uh, trying to film two tutorials on one day. I should have known better. I'm going to be exhausted by the time this day is over with. I can tell you that right now. I also wanted to do a goals update video recording today because I made something that is part of my goal, my long-term crochet goals, but also a 2020 goal. And I am super excited about it. And I don't know what order these videos are coming in. So you may have already heard about it. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. But I am super excited to share that update with my goals. It's hard making goals. And I try not to make New Year's resolutions or anything like that. Because I don't... Wow. So the laptop it just turned off my camera. So I don't know what part of that got cut off. I may have to uh, do a little clip right there. But I was talking about goals. And... Uh, I don't like to set goals for myself in case like something comes up and I don't like feeling like I disappointed myself or like I failed somehow. So this is the first row of single crochets. We're going to do one more. But this year I decided to set some, some goals for myself and make them simple enough that I I'm able to accomplish them. Basically it's, it's trying to push myself out of my comfort zone. And make some things that I have wanted to make for a very long time. And to work on a project. Because I keep putting projects off. Because the channel tends to come before my own personal projects. And so I make stuff for the channel. Or I make stuff like this bee for my daughter. Which also benefits the channel. And I put my plans and goals aside. And so I think like with making the goal list for this year, I was able to actually like make myself hold myself accountable and make myself get to the things that I want to make. I know a lot of other podcasters are doing, um, bucket lists, like pattern bucket lists for themselves. I I'm not doing that because I already set two big goals for myself this year and I've accomplished one of those big goals for a pattern and I'm going to keep on working on that goal because it was a very fulfilling goal to me and the other goals are like you know I'm trying to be healthy trying to not be sick all the time which I'm I'm doing a good job at I'm not doing an excellent job at but just eliminating the wheat from my life has made my life about 60 percent better than it was Without going into too much detail, like, wheat makes me really sick. And I didn't know that until very recently. And my life has changed getting rid of it. I didn't realize I was so sick from something so common for so long. But I also, like, you know, I got rid of a bookshelf I wanted to get rid of. And that sounds like a silly goal, but like I got rid of a ton of yarn to get rid of that bookshelf. I had to sell it in my mystery boxes, but I benefited a whole bunch of people, not just me. All right, so we're at this point to where we're going to check again our B shape. So we got the face. And don't worry if there's like a bend here that will smooth out when you stuff it see this had the same bend but it smooths out when you stuff it it's not a big deal so that's what we have so far so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this pink attached but I'm now going to attach the darker pink for the striping because with my yellow bee the striping was too far back on the body and I didn't like that Let's see if I can Center pull this one as easily as I did that one. Nope. 
yarn barf. Oh, let's unravel that a little bit. At least I don't have to fight the middle of that so much. We're going to do our stripes. And the stripes are going to be more of single crocheting in the round. Don't mind me, I'm untangling. <laughs> I'm untangling. So because I showed you the nature of the end of this yarn, we're going to leave a long tail. We're going to connect it like this. We're going to slip stitch that. We're going to pull that lighter color tight. And we're going to crochet over the top of our tail. Okay, using the darker color. We can remove the stitch marker because now we have this. It's a totally different color. We are going to chain one and that same stitch we are going to single crochet all right and make sure these these yarns here are pulled kind of tight we're just going to go single crochet all the way in the round for this row try to stay over the top of those tails so that you don't have to weave them in or tuck them in. They don't come unraveled later on. Because like I said, with the friction of this yarn, like this yarn is not coming undone. Once it's once it's in here, it's not coming undone. But if you don't go over the top of your tails, like who knows what's going to happen. I really like these two pinks together. The lighter pink reminds me of strawberry milk, which my daughter loved when she was little. Now she hates it. A little man has never been a fan of any kind of milk. He just don't like it. The only milk he liked was booby milk when he was a baby. Oh my god, that kid. <laughs> he was hard to wean from breastfeeding. He was like attached to me for almost two years. I could not. Could not. And I was like, kid, this is enough. I, I gotta be done. I gotta be done. It's the only milk he's ever liked. Human milk. <laughs> what? What am I doing? I didn't detach this. I'm crocheting over the top of this. Don't do this. Don't... <laughs> Don't crochet over that tail like that. I'm going to cut it. I'll cut it. Because that was a mistake. I should not have did that. That's what I get for talking so much. I'm just going to... It's fine. We'll reattach it. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. I don't know what I was doing. So yeah, this light pink reminds me of strawberry milk. I don't know what this dark milk, or the dark milk. Yeah, this dark milk. I don't know what the dark pink reminds me of yet. I'm still, it's a, uh, I don't even know if it's reading on the camera correctly. Because it's like one of those bright pinks that the camera's like, I don't know what to do with that. Lost some of the fluff off of that end of that. Now, hopefully those ends don't worm their way out. If they do, you can sew them down with thread. I don't think they will. Because I'm crocheting kind of tight. And I'm going to tell you right now, I would not recommend anything smaller than an 8 millimeter hook with this yarn. I cannot imagine. They say 6 millimeter. I cannot imagine using a 6 millimeter hook with this yarn. Because first of all, look. It completely fills up that well. That's usually how I test my yarn. Because if it's too big for that, I, this would not work with a 6 millimeter. I don't understand. Especially if it's a jumbo number 6. I don't know who makes up the ratings for some of these yarns. It's just crazy to me. It's almost weird how quiet it is in this house. The dogs are laying on the couch being good. The kids are at school. Mr. Cinnamon's at work. 
most uneasy. All right, so we made it all the way around. We're gonna slip stitch. My arm is hurting. My arm is hurting. <laughs> oh, take a stretch break. Stretch those muscles out. Amigurumi, because you're crocheting tighter, can hurt your, your arms, your hands. So if you find that, just take a break and we're going to do single crochet all the way around in this row again. If you need a break, take a break. But yeah, amigurumi can cause hand and muscle cramps and using a really thick yarn can use hand and uh, could cause hand and muscle cramps. So needed another drink of water. My throat is getting sore from talking so much. Like I said, this is my second tutorial of the day. This is why I don't make tutorials very often. They are exhausting to me. Now, if I do premiere week and I do five tutorials in a week, I gotta take time off after that. It is absolutely exhausting. It's like exhausting mentally and like, because you're holding your arms up on a table to crochet. Your body's not used to sitting this way. Shoulders start to hurt. Your back starts to hurt. Especially when you're doing amigurumi like this. <laughs> your arm starts to hurt. And they're picking up fluff. These colors are so pretty. You can make these stripes as thick as you want or as thin as you want. When I did the yellow bee, I did thick, thick, then I did a thin stripe. I'm not sure. I'm just going to play this one by ear. I like I like the three stripes. So we're definitely going to do three stripes, but I'm not sure on how thick I want to make these stripes or how thin or what combination. Because I also like different size stripes in there because I think it... It looks closer to a bee or a wasp in nature and um, the unevenness, the same thing. Like nothing in nature is perfect. Nothing is completely symmetrical, nothing. And I think that's what makes things beautiful in nature is the, the asymmetric, the non-perfect. All right, so we're back at the beginning. I'm gonna slip stitch, chain one. And I'm gonna go one more row thickness, but I'm gonna increase on this row because like I said, every once in a while I wanna increase to give it that, that bulbousness on his backside. So we're gonna do two. Single crochet. And then we're gonna do nine. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tangle, I'm gonna stop to detangle. And then two together in that same stitch. And then nine. You hear the laptop fan is kicking on underneath this. Make sure I'm not overheating anything. Nope. Still nice and cool. Our battery is still charging. I'm 
Yep, see there's the end of our tail. We might have to tuck that in or sew it down. Is that nine? I think so. Nine and then an increase. And then nine. So are you making one of these bees or are you just listening to me talk? And if you're making one of these bees, who are you making it for? Leave me that comment below. I would love to know who you're making a bee for. Are you making it for yourself? Are you making it for somebody else? Okay, so I have five stitches after that last increase, but that's fine. It does not matter. We're just trying to add a bulbous butt. All right, so this stripe is about... Just over an inch, but slightly. And on the yellow bee, about the same. That works. That's a good size stripe for me. We're going to add the light pink back in that I should have not. It doesn't matter what I shouldn't have did. Shouldn't have matter. It doesn't matter. All right. This time, we're not going to crochet over all of that. Dog scared me. And do the same thing. We're just going to add it in, pull that tight. We're going to crochet one stitch over the dark pink and then we're going to drop it. <laughs> so, chain one. Nope, I'm chaining with the wrong yarn. Chain one with the light pink. And then we're going to single crochet over both of those just to lock that in place and drop the dark pink. Put it to the back so we're not crocheting over it. Reminding myself, and then we're going to crochet over the light pink. And this row is just going to be single crochets all the way around. No increases this row. No increases. I think once I make Juju her bee, I can almost guarantee little man is going to want one. I might just give him this yellow one because I don't think he'll care. He doesn't really play. I mean, he plays with them for a while and then he loses them. So when I give him Amigurumi, I don't ever see them again. Except for the mushroom. <laughs> when I made the mushrooms, um... He not only took off with his, but then he wanted mine as well because the mushrooms are from Mario Brothers, apparently. And so he needed all of the mushrooms so that he could play with them because he play he has a little um, Mario Brother figurine that he got from Walmart. And I don't know what he does with them, but he plays with them in his bedroom. He makes all kinds of noise in there. He has so much fun. So I'm like, all right, you can have my mushrooms. I mean, he was about one and a half or two. I made him a stuffed star. He loved that thing. He took it with him everywhere. And it was not anything spectacular. But he loved it. And it was way smaller than this bee is going to be. I think it was a Jaden Stitches pattern. He loved that little star. Ooh. My arm is hurting. I might need a heat pad after this. 
You guys have the benefit of pausing the video and coming back later and finishing it if you need a break. I'm just trying to get through this so I can get it uploaded. Alright, now we're almost to the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick that dark yarn back up. Whatever your stripe color is. Okay, we're going to go in here like we're going to slip stitch. We're going to bring the dark color through to slip stitch. We're going to chain one. And then we're going to single crochet one stitch over the light pink. And then drop that to the back. Now we're working with the dark yarn again. Okay. And then we're going to do single crochet all the way around all the way around i think this is probably going to be my thin my thin stripe you can do these stripes however you want if you want just thick stripes you can make thick thick stripes you can just do two stripes you can just do one stripe i like the three and i think i'm gonna put the thin stripe in the middle no two b's that i create are alike so this is just going to be one row of single crochet of the dark pink stripe. And then we're going to pick that pink back up. But like I said, you don't have to pick the pink back up. You can make this a thick stripe if you want. Makes no never mind to me. It's your bee. Make it yours. When I made this yellow bee, I had someone yell at me that bees' stripes are not actually black. They're brown. Being as though I have about a hundred images of bees and wasps up close, <laughs> I'm quite familiar with the actual coloring of a bee because I have a macro lens and I'm not afraid of bees, so I get really close to the bees. I also have a really zoom in lens so macro is like really really close up pictures like I have the ability to see all of the hairs and the fibers on bees and all the little pollen stuff that gets stuck to their legs I have pictures like that if I can find one I will absolutely pop it up for you so like I do know what bees look like up close but it's a stuffed animal so and I don't really like brown so I don't have brown yarn it's just funny what people get nitpicky about. <laughs> uh, she wasn't rude about it. She was just, you know, correcting me. Or educating me. She was educating me. People are funny. People are funny. I can't say that I'm any better, though, because I cannot stand when I'm at a petting farm or a zoo and someone calls an alpaca a llama, a, a llama, yeah, a llama. It's not a llama, it's an alpaca. They are totally different animals. So, yeah, I get, <laughs> I get all nitpicky, too. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing we did. Is we're going to go through, like, we're going to slip stitch, but we're going to grab the pink yarn. And slip stitch it through and then you're going to do one stitch over that dark pink to lock it in and drop the dark pink okay and then we are going to single crochet all the way around single crochet and we're getting close to the part where we're going to start to decrease on the rear end. But I think we're going to do that after we get through the stripes because it's just easier. And this actually gives you a cool like diamond effect. So. Which I like. I think that looks neat. Of course, if you don't like the diamond effect, feel free to make two rows of the single crochet. You can even do double, or not double, do not do double. 
You can do a row of half double crochets and it won't be so diamondy. But you just have to make sure that you do it tight because you don't want the gaps to let the stuffing out. Although another trick is that if you're worried about the stuffing coming out, you could fill like pantyhose or stockings with the stuffing and put that in there. And then it like almost gives it like a cage in there so it doesn't come out past the stockings. But stockings are expensive and I don't really feel like cutting them up. Especially stockings big enough for this body. turning out cute right he's a lot bigger than I was expecting but that's all right he's gonna have a squatty body I'm gonna get to the end of this row and I'm gonna take a little bit of a break stretch my arms out because they're hurting then I will come back and finish the tutorial, but you guys won't even notice I'm gone. But in case I come back and repeat myself, you'll know that I took a break right here. So we're at the end of the row. We're going to go in like we're slip stitching and grab that pink yarn back up. And chain one. And lock the pink in. And I will be right back. All right. I feel better now. <clears throat> I walked around the house a little bit. Stretched out a little bit. Now we're ready to get back to this tutorial. Now, once again, we're just doing single crochets around. This is no big deal. It's not anything fancy. And we're going to do the same thing as we did here. We're going to do three rows of the dark pink, just straight. And you see the way our bodies went out this way. And now it's going to go in a little bit. And then once we get past the dark stripe, we're going to start decreasing and bringing the body back. So I'm going to do three single crochet rows, exactly like we did this one. And I will be back to show you what we're going to do for the decrease. All right, so I made my three rows. I'm coming to the end. And because we're done with our stripes, we can connect this same way we did the last time. We want to bring the pink in. Chain one with the pink. Make sure you pull everything tight there. Cut a couple inches of the dark pink or your stripe color. Get rid of that. We're going to crochet the next row over the top of that tail to lock it in. This row we are going to do decreases. So we're going to start with a single crochet here. And then we're going to do two single crochets together. So this is not two single crochets in one stitch. This is two single crochets crocheted together over the next two stitches. Okay, and then we're going to go eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then go in here, pull up a loop, go into the next hole, pull up a loop, Crochet them together. That's a decrease. And then eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to decrease again. So we're going to go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, and in the next stitch after that, and pull up a loop, and 
single crochet those together and then the next eight stitches and we're gonna do this all the way around and do eight single crochets over the next eight stitches four five six seven eight and then single crochet two together Two together and this will start to bring the body back in so that we can start to form the tail but <laughs> when we get to the end of this row we're gonna do something weird you might not like it we're gonna stop crocheting the body for a minute because I hate sewing on body parts after the fact I stopped counting hang on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, that was perfect. Two together. And then we got a couple stitches left. All right. Connect that. Put our stitch marker here so it doesn't come undone. Yeah. This is what we got so far. This is the body. See how it's starting to go in a little bit? I'm going to put that back there because what we are going to do now, we're going to make the wings. Scarlet, it's okay. And because this is a smaller, thinner yarn, I need a smaller, thinner hook. I think that'll work. I don't know what size this hook is, but it's definitely smaller than the one I was working with. We are going to make the wings and the reason we're going to do the wings now is because it is so much easier to crochet or to sew something on to an open slot instead of instead of doing it after the fact just that's it's easier to me we're also going to put the face on before we close it so we're going to do the face next now what we're going to do is we are going to do this is going to be very easy. You're going to do a slip stitch. So you need your white yarn. And I might hold this together with another white yarn. Now that I'm thinking about it, I want it thicker. Hang on. All right. Closest white I had is white glittery cotton from my leftover pineapple shirt. This will add a little bit of stiffness, a little bit of uh, ease to work with this, a little thickness. So we're going to do a slip knot. You don't have to use cotton. You can use any yarn held together with this. You can just use the, the chenille yarn. Does not matter to me. This is what I'm doing. Okay, we're going to crochet one. Well, we're, we're going to chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. This will also hopefully help us to see our stitches a little bit better. And we are going to, I wonder if I give you guys a darker background, if it will be easier to see the whiter, if you guys can see that. Let's try that. Okay. Now we'll try to stay in frame. We are gonna go back in each stitch and do a single crochet. So you'll have eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now what we're going to do is something unusual because this is, I need a yarn bowl. I need a yarn bowl. I'm 
looking for my ball of yarn. Okay. In the same last stitch, the one that's touching the knot, we're going to put two more single crochets. One and two. And that will bring us to the bottom side of the chaining row. So we're going to go back into these chain rows and we're going to go back this way. So we're going to be working this in like an oval shape. Okay. Try to crochet over these tails, but if you can't, like you can weave them in later, but I hate weaving them in. And you should have eight single crochets back across the chain, the bottom of the chain, the chains. That's one. Two, take your time. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. So we only have seven, but that is okay. We're going to go right into the top of that single crochet, the first single crochet of the row, not the chain. And we are going to put three stitches. So one, two, and three. Now we're back on the top of that single crochet row. Okay. We're just going to single crochet across in every stitch. And I know it's really hard for you guys to see this because A, it's furry and B, it's white. But it's, it, it's going to be hard for you to see it anyway. It's hard for me to see it. Pink. Now when you get to the top of the, the oval, there will be a top stitch there where you did the three single crochets in the top of this. In that one, you're going to put three single crochets. Okay. One, two, three. And then you're going to go all the way around and you're going to single crochet again. This is actually kind of pretty. I think that little streamer of silver adds something to it and the cotton is definitely making it stiffer so we're going to keep on crocheting all the way in the round but our increases this time will be on the ends okay so now here if you look there is a stitch here and here and here and here so what we're going to do is we're going to put a single crochet here actually we're going to put two there Put two single crochet on that side, one in the middle, and then two on this side. And as long as you put your increases down here, you can put three on this side, or you put two here and two here, You, the, it will continue to make this ovular shape. It doesn't matter to me. Do what's easiest to you. And keep going until you have a decent size wing. Just keep going around and increase on those ends. If it starts to curl up on the ends, that is just fine. Because look, it gives it a little bit of detail. I apologize if you can hear truck noises outside. They are laying a driveway across the street. I don't know if I said that in this tutorial. Or if I said it in the last tutorial, <laughs> I'm filming two today. So we got to the end again and we have a stitch here, a stitch here, a stitch here. So we're going to do the same thing we did on that end is we're going to do two on the one just off to the side of the very tip. We'll put one in the middle and we'll put two in that next one off to the side of the very top. And then... We will continue single crocheting around the edges 
Now these are, this one wing, we're going to split in half and it's going to actually be two wings. So that way we don't have to make two of these. Because this part is not fun to me, but I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And we're to the tip again. And we are going to put the increase on the pointy part. So that very top stitch is going to get two, actually three, three single crochet. One, two, and three. Just in that very tip. And then we're going to go down the wing again. Just single crochets. And just weaved in a dark hair. And again, depending on how big or how little your bee is will depend on how big this wing is going to be. Because what we're going to do when we get to the end is we're going to gather it here. And if that's big enough for your bee, then you can stop here. But my bee needs a much bigger wing, so we're going to keep going. And I'm just going to keep increasing here at the tip. And either at the tip here with three or on either sides of the tip with two on either side. Just alternate back and forth. It makes it a little more even. Round and around and around she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. I sure don't know how big I'm gonna make these wings, but that's a big bee body. So we need a we need a big bee or a big big set of wings. We do little teensy wings. Do you guys remember the movie Bugs Life? There was a character called Heimlich. He was a caterpillar. He was a big giant caterpillar. He was like fat and chunky and, and just he was the cutest thing ever. I think he had a German accent. He was the cutest thing. <laughs> He was my favorite character from that movie when I was a teenager. Anyway, at the very, very end of the movie, as, um, like, the the end scenes that sometimes Disney and Pixar movies will add to the end, he got his wings and he turned into a beautiful butterfly. And he was still a big, giant caterpillar, but his wings were teensy. <laughs> I love that part of the movie. He just knew he was beautiful. He didn't even care. I like that movie. That was a good movie. Yeah, see my... I'm just trying to weed, worm its way out. Man, that uh, truck is loud. asphalt truck they're dumping the asphalt into a hopper I remember watching construction guys I, my dad always worked in labor jobs he didn't necessarily do uh, like asphalt but he always he always did labor he always worked his butt off for not enough money and um, all of his friends always were in the labor game too because like that's where he socialized and I remember watching guys do construction jobs or like this kind of work they would just bust their butt they would like haul it back and forth in wheelbarrows that they had to push and now these these younger guys are like they have these hoppers that they drive like when we had our patio laid a couple years ago I was watching the concrete guys. They have these really cool hoppers and they are just giant, giant buckets that they fill up with concrete and they drive the thing. Like it almost has like a high low engine to it. They drive the thing around in the backyard, dump the concrete and come back. And I'm thinking these kids have no idea how easy they have it. I mean, they still have a back breaking job. They still have to shovel it out of these buckets that dump themselves. <laughs> 
they don't realize what it's like to do a wheelbarrow at full of heavy wet concrete and wheel it to the back and dump it out they have no idea how easy they have it I always admired people that did like really hard labor jobs like that because it is honestly like taxing on your body and they don't get paid they don't get paid enough for how hard they work I'm talking I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing when your wings get big enough just stop crocheting somewhere in the middle of the oval so stop right there that will end your row and they cut a really long string and I'll show you why I will show you why because I think this is getting and this is not a giant wing but I think that's big enough maybe 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 another row As you can tell if you're watching me crochet, I'm not really keeping track of where the stitches are going. I'm just kind of like, if I feel like it needs to be increased on the side to make it go out more, I add them on the sides. If I feel like it needs to be more pointy towards the end, I just add it on the end. This is not, it's not, you don't have to like overthink this. And I know there are crocheters that this drives them nuts because they have to have detail, 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 detail. And I'm sorry, but I'm not that kind of crocheter at all. Like, I crochet by feel and I crochet, and I'm trying to teach you guys how to do it more often. So this one I'm going to do on the sides. And actually, we're going to do two single crochet in one, a single crochet two single crochet in one, a single crochet, and then two single crochet in one. Because it's getting kind of big and I want it to be out a little more. And then I'm going to, when we're done with this, I'll show you how to make the wings to form the wings. And then I will show you, whatever you do on this end, you need to do on that end. So I will show you how to form the wings and how to attach the wings. This is going to be my last row because I think these wings are good and my arm's killing me. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing we did on that one. We're going to do two, then one, and then two, and then one. And then I'm going to fold it in half and see where our middle is. Our middle is right here. So that's where we need to stop crocheting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven more stitches. Now, we need a long tail because this is going to be the tail that not only, and I pulled out about two feet, I don't know if I'll need two feet, this is going to be the tail that we form the wing with, but it's also going to be, I'm going to do a slip stitch to knot that off, it's also going to be what we use to sew this to the B, okay? Let me get, hang on one second. I had to go find my darning needle. All right. We're going to thread our needle. And then we're going to take and go across the center of this. I feel like maybe I didn't do it at the center all the way. No, that's the center. All right, so 
If you want to fold it in half so you make sure you're at the center of the bee, you can do that, or the wing. And we are just going to, this is our line, we're going to weave in and out and in and out across the middle of that. Pull it through. All the way across. The center of that wing. And then pull tight. And then that will give you this kind of a shape for the wing. And you can play with it and tuck it and then that's your wing and I'm gonna go through a little more just to lock this in a little bit make sure it stays Chanel does not like to cooperate all right, so that's our that's our wings. And then we're gonna take our bee body. Now, if you have a very noticeable section where you're like counting up, this is where we attach the rows in the round. So if that's noticeable and that irritates you, the best way to hide it is put your wing right on top of it. Nobody will know it's there. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go right on top. Let me zoom you out a little bit. We're gonna go right on top of that join as to hide it <laughs> so it's not so visible. And we are going to sew on our wings. We're gonna go in and out, in and out in the wings. See, and we gotta be careful because that chenille is not pulling. I might have to detach the chenille, it keeps doing that. See that? Yeah, I'm gonna detach the chenille. Take the chenille out. Let me go back in so that I can, one more time, get it in there. That is a pain in the butt. See, it did it again. That is just not worth the hassle. Cut the chenille and only the chenille. This is going to be inside the body, so you can just literally knot this and it will stay. And no one will know. I'm not even on camera. You can just knot this and keep it tucked into the body. Just make sure it's a big enough knot that it's not going to pull through. Alright, good enough. Where that chenille? That is not working for me. All right, now make sure you don't sew the pink down. So make sure that stays out of your way. And then just keep sewing this wing down. Try to keep it in the center there where the, the join is. Keep going back and forth until you feel like it is secure and it's not going to come off with play. Especially if you're making this for a little one. You don't want body parts to fall off. But this seems pretty damn sick. I mean, pretty darn secure. <laughs> Oops. Pretty darn secure. That is what the wings look like right now. They are definitely not coming off. I think we're just gonna knot this off. Boop. 
Call that a day. And bad babies is on. All right. Now, I know we're going to move to a different part. We are going to add the eyeballs. Now, this part gets a little complicated, but don't be scared of it, okay? This is where I messed up with this bee. So I attached the wings, and the eyes were off center from the wings. So, to stop that from happening, we're going to fold the bee down the middle where the join is so that we can center the eyes on either side of this, okay? We are going to get some stitch markers out so that we can mark it, so that we can make sure that it is even. Okay. So you come down. And you're going to say, do you want my eyeballs? Let's see. One, two, three. You got to kind of picture this as if it's the half of the bee. Where do you want your eyeball at? I'll say probably right here. You're just going to have to figure out where you want it because I'm doing this as a make the bee any size you want tutorial. So I can't really tell you where to put your eyeballs. But I can tell you to do that. And does that seem... That seems way too far. <laughs> so we need them closer to the front. So let's try here. Okay, so I got my eyes about where I want them. I think this one needs to come down a little bit. And the good thing about this is you can always take your eyeballs and... You can put these in the holes. You don't have to fasten them in just to make sure that that's kind of where you want them. And you can still rearrange them. See, that's not quite even. So we'll slide it over a little bit. Trying to make sure that it's lined up with the wings because that was my problem last time. It was not lined up with the wings. If this takes you a little while, it's not the end of the world. I'm trying to What's the beginning? This is why I don't write patterns. Because how do you determine or tell someone where their eyeballs should go? <laughs> it's complicated. All right. You gotta kinda puff it up now. I mean, I don't like that. I feel like those are too far apart. Move it over. I'm showing you guys this so that you know. I mean, that's too close together. That just looks funny. Well, maybe. Maybe. What do you guys think? I feel like it's crooked again. I feel like... That. Ah! Dang. Ding, dang. Right there. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now we're going to pop these back out. I'm going to mark that stitch. I'll show you why. Now, if if you're if you're not doing eyelashes, by all means, just connect your eyeballs at that point. But I'm going to show you how I do eyelashes. I just have regular acrylic yarn. This is just yarn from the Dollar Tree. Now the little man took off with my scissors. I have to figure out where I put my oh god oh, there. I'm just gonna cut a piece about two feet long. We're going to get if I can find it now. 
for you that was a couple minutes it's, for me it's like several hours later so i'm discombobulated i had to go pick lucas up from school and can't find anything <laughs> my phone died i had to recharge it all right so i'm going to connect this to my needle All right, we're gonna take the other end and I'm going to do a slip knot like that because I'm gonna show you this is how I attach my yarn. You go into the inside, to the inside, somewhere around where your eye is gonna be. So you can see there's my stitch marker. And I'm gonna put this on an inner loop, put the loop around and pull that slip knot tight. And this is how we're gonna connect our yarn on the inside. All right, I'm going to go back in so you can't see it. You don't want to see it on the outside. And we know that our eyeball is going to connect into this hole right here somewhere. So we are going to poke the yarn through. Whoops. The hole that the stitch marker is in. Get you guys a little bit closer. And we are going to make eyelashes. We're going to go up one, two rows and put the needle in, pull it through. And if you want that to be thicker, you can go through twice, but I think I'm good with that. We're going to go back in that same hole we came out of the first time. And this time we're going to go this way. So we're going to go up one, two rows this way. Pull it through. We have an eyelash and then before you do anything else, check and make sure that you like the way that looks, okay? And you can put a third one on here if you want, but I'm not going to. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect this eyeball because I'm completely satisfied with that. I'm just going to put my bottom on the, the back. All right. Now we're going to take our needle and go over to this hole over here. So you want to make sure, yep, right there, go into that hole. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go up two rows. So make sure that's even. One, two rows and go in and go back in that same hole we started out of and then if you can see here, there's one, two stitches over, one, two stitches over, go in that hole. And before we do anything, we're going to test that eyeball. We can probably take the stitch marker out. What do you guys think? Cute? I think so too. All right. And then we're going to take this stitch marker out and put the back on this eyeball. All right. And we're going to come in here, and untangle ourselves. Oh, you see what I did there? <laughs> to fix that and we are going to knot this by grabbing an inner loop somewhere in here make sure that we can't see it on the outside and we're just going to tie it off with a knot whoop sorry guys all right then we can cut a piece off that is our eyes all right now I'm going to figure out how to unloop this. I have done this so many times. Nope, ain't going to work. We're going to have to cut our yarn. <laughs> cut our yarn. There we go. Cut our yarn, cut our losses. Now, we got the face done. If you want... Oh... 
Now I'm kicking the tripod. You can grab your stuffing. You have to figure out what we just did with it. You came in here and threw everything to the wayside. You put some stuffing in here. So you can get an idea of what your bee is going to look like. That's our bee face. That's pretty cute. Pretty cute, if I do say so myself. And that looks a little bit off, but it's not. It's not as off as the yellow one. So, all right. You leave the stuffing in there if you want and just keep crocheting. See if I can remember what hook I was using. I think I was using this one. Dangerous territory I'm in. All right. No, all right. So because we cut that, we're going to have to tie in a new piece. No big deal. Showed you how to do this already. Pull that through. Pull that bottom one tight. Now we are just going to go through and we are going to do decreases in this row. So we're going to start the row with two single crochets together. Then we're going to go over the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to do, see a big old chunk of fuzz came right off of the string. Look at, and we're going to single crochet the next two stitches together. And we're going to do this all the way around. Seven single crochets. Seven, two together. You ever have to go into your skein and stick your fingers in there to open up the center because it has somehow collapsed on itself and now the yarn don't want to come out? Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, so I did two together. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then two together. And then the next couple rows, we're going to do a row of, not even on camera, <laughs> we're going to do a row of decrease like this and then a row of straight and a row of decrease and a row of straight. So this will be our decrease row. And the reason that we're going to do that is we're going to do a slow decline on his butt. So it's not like flat here. So, but instead it's more, Rounded and tapered off like that. Or her butt. Whatever. Just because she's in pink doesn't mean she has to be a girl, right? My daddy loved to wear the color pink. And purple. And aqua. My daddy used to wear... <laughs> He used to wear to church Steve Harvey suits. He loves Steve Harvey suits. And um, 
I forget what the other brand was, but he, he used to go to um, this place called Gibraltar. And he would buy his suits from there in the most wildest colors. My dad was a sharp-dressed man. He was kind of a conundrum. Because there's the start of the row. He was a biker and a trucker and a church man and he knew how to dress at church. I'm having so many problems with this tripod today. It's not, it's not turning for me. Hang on. Let's try that again. <laughs> you can tell it's the end of the day. I'm getting tired. All right, so this row is just going to be straight single crochet around. All the way around. Ooh, getting a little rug burn. This video might take forever to put together and upload with all the constant breaking and the <laughs> lotion breaks. Mr. Cinnamon will be home from school or school. Yeah, Mr. Cinnamon will be home from work soon. He had to work late today. And so it's like setting my schedule off. I don't feel like cooking dinner at all. The kids are hungry. Granted, my 15 year old is fully capable of cooking, but God forbid. God forbid. I mean, she'll cook for herself, but like she ain't cooking for a little man for some odd reason. And now the lotion is making the yarn stick to my hands. I've had so many suggestions from people on what to do about my hands. They want me to put gloves on. The problem with gloves is um, the yarn doesn't slip through my fingers. I have had people suggest just all kinds of stuff. And I know you guys are trying to be helpful. <laughs> I know you are. But certain, I can't use certain medicines because of allergies. I can't use other certain lotions and stuff because it affects the eczema. I know negative way even though it would work for regular people it's just a pain in the butt and honestly I think I craft too much and I think that is helping to uh, wear down my skin a little bit I don't know so remember this is just the straight crochet across the next row we will decrease again and the next row we will do a decrease in the first stitch and then six single crochets and then a decrease. You guys tired of being with me already? I feel like I'm tired of myself. <laughs> I'm getting tired of myself. I keep missing that second loop. There we go. I think when I go to edit this video later, I'm going to take my laptop. We're back at the beginning of the row because we're at the wings. I think I'm going to take my laptop and sit in the backyard. Get some fresh air. One, two, three. Four, five, six. So we started that row with a decrease. We're doing six single crochets and a decrease. And then six single crochets. Four, five, six, and a decrease. And this part goes way faster because you're using it. Each row will be a little bit less stitches than the previous previous one one two three four five six 
a crease. Actually, I think I mentioned this in the videos, the internet is out. So I might not even be able to upload these videos tonight. Two, three, four, five, six. That's right though, because these videos are not meant to upload until next week. So by the time you see this, it will be last week at the filming of this video. One, two, three, four. I also hope I have enough stuffing for this. Six. Juju had a project at school and she had to sew together two pieces of a butterfly to make it look like a um a pillow and she took some of my stuffing so now I'm like almost out. I'm gonna have to do some shaping there because it's looking a little a little bit wonky. It's cute though. It's cute. Don't worry. The stuffing and the fluff will help to shape it a little better. All right. So now this is a row of just straight singles. Straight singles. I will show this when it's complete on my Instagram and possibly my TikTok um, after I finish it because I'm not going to do it as part of the tutorial, but I said I want to put a strawberry on his butt. I think it'll be so cute with a little strawberry. So we're just single crocheting around and around So we get back up to those wings. I feel like this is a bigger hook. My holes seem bigger. I might have to switch back to that other hook that's over there. That's what I get for having two red furls on my desk. <laughs> that's what I get. Whoop, tangled. I think this is the one I used, but I'm not positive. Seems like my holes are getting bigger though. Maybe my tension is just getting bigger. All right, so now I'm gonna switch to the smaller hook. Let's see. We're gonna start the row with a decrease. Now we're gonna go the next five stitches. One, two, yeah, this is better. Three, four, five. And then do a decrease, yep. I think I was using the wrong hook. One, two, three, four, five, and then a decrease. No idea what, okay, one, two, three, four, five, decrease. I know you guys can hear it in my voice that my energy is now lower. <laughs> two, three, four, five. This is why I don't do a lot of tutorials because they just... They take everything out of me. They make me so tired, especially when you include mommy duty and wife duty. Three, four, five. And I just had a moment of panic in my head as I said that. Did I feed the dogs today? I did. I also took my meds. <laughs> oh. 
All right, we're back to the beginning row. So we're going to do a row of straight single crochets around. So it looks like this is only going to take one skein of the Premier Chunky because I have a lot left on the skein. So, and this is a pretty big, a pretty big stuffy. Juliana, being loud. This is why I do, do, to, to, do tutorials when they're at school. Because they're just loud. She's in there making out with her dog. <laughs> she, I swear, she prefers dogs over people. And I know there's a lot of people that are like that. I used to be like that. Um, now dogs are kind of equal to people. But she's in there, I love you, mom, on the dog. And I know she's going to be embarrassed. Because I'm leaving that in the video. She's going to be weird. I'm going to leave it in there. All right, we're back at the beginning of the row. So we're going to decrease this row. And we're going to do four. One, two, three, four. And decrease. Then we're going to do four. One, two, three, four. You're going to continue this until it's close enough that you can make a, um, you can close it off. Three, four. I'm going to have to add some more stuffing now while I uh, have room to put my hand in the hole. The body's looking pretty cute. I really like the way the striping looks. I hope if you're doing this tutorial with me, your bee is turning out as cute as mine. All right, I'm going to put my stitch marker so I don't lose my stitch. I'm going to grab my stuffing. And that is all the stuffing that I have left. So it's going to have to be enough. <laughs> that was the end. Oh, I found one more floof that fell out on the floor. Hang on, let me grab it. Now, you know, stick your hand in there and fluff it up. And you can push it outwards towards the edges. I like to go in there and just kind of fluff it with my hand. Try to get it into all the spots. And then we close it up. We're going to roll it around and see if we can get it. Because this is not a real stiff yarn, you're not going to get a real stiff body, but it's perfect for, it's perfect for play. I don't know why there's glue sticks in that bag. Alright, now we can pick up and finish the butt. This is probably going to be underflated. Under it inflated but I have to pull that stitch out it was not wanting to release so this row is a just single crochet all the way around Mr. Cinnamon's home, yay! He's staring at me like he don't know what to do. He's like, she's filming, do I say hi to her? Is she gonna bite my head off if I interrupt her? He's just standing there. It's 
kind of funny. <laughs> Hi. I stopped and got gas in the van. Huh? I stopped and got gas in the van. You filled it up? I did. Okay. I wish I would have known I would have filled up my car. Why didn't you? Because the giant had a million cars in it. Mm. I went to 7 Eleven. He's talking about gas. He asked me to stop and, and now I will tell you. We've had this van for a couple years. We've had this van a couple years. And we stopped, and I was like, Juju, you have your learner's permit now. Oh, I, see, I was talking, didn't realize I started a new role. And I was like, you need to learn how to fill your gas tank. So, she's like, okay, I don't know how, but walk me through it. She got out, so we're going to decrease at the beginning of this row. And now we're doing one, two, three decrease. Okay. One. Two, three, decrease. She's all, um, I don't know how to do this. I was like, I'll walk you through it. And then she got out and I couldn't figure out how to open the gas tank because it occurred to me in all the years that we've had this van. It's only been like two or three years. I have never put gas in that van. I didn't even know how to open the gas tank. Mr. Cinnamon does not let me do that. Like that's his job. He always puts gas in my car. And so I started laughing. I was like, I'm trying to teach her. I don't even know how to put gas in the car. But there, there's something going on with the, the, the gas in Virginia. And so they are having, um, everybody's running to get gas and panic that the prices are going to go up. And I had to stop because I was, I needed gas. And he said, get it now because it's just going to get bad. And that's what he was telling me is the grocery store is really bad there's just a ton of people everybody's coming home from work and stopping and getting gas All right body's looking good I don't know why it's tighter there and it looks like it's going in but that's all right I don't that don't bother me and we're gonna do another row of straight Single crochet. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. Yay! I wish I had just a little more fluff. I'm going to have to order some more. My fluff, I this fluff, I've had it a while. I got it at the thrift store. It was a brand new bag of fluff somebody donated. I paid like $3.99. It was a big bag. It's lasted me a while. It was a big bag. And now I just used my last little bit of floof. So, we're done with the Omigurumis so I can get some more floof. But that's not a big deal. I don't make Omigurumis that often. So, they're not my cup of tea. Although that's empty. That's really empty. <laughs> Back at the beginning. So, we're going to decrease again. This time we're going to do decrease, then two stitches, decrease, two stitches, decrease, two stitches, decrease. Two stitches. Decrease. Mr. Cinnamon came, grabbed Juju, and left. I don't know where they're going. Probably go pick up the niece. She wanted to come over again. And I'm like, she has to leave again tomorrow. She lives nowhere near us. I'm driving her back and forth. So this is going to be the last row of just in the round. We're going to decrease the rest of the rows. There's only like two rows left. Actually, there might only be, no, I think there's two rows left. I 
I might have to go look for some more fluff and pull that up. I might be able to pull that up. It's just going to be softer. All right, now this row, we're going to change it up. We're just going to decrease every single stitch. So we're going to do two single together, two single together, two single together, all the way around to get back to the top. A timer for one second, says Lucas. Beep. <laughs> oh, weird kid. Kind of hope we all get to sleep in tomorrow. All right, then we're going to do the same thing again. Decrease in every stitch. Two together, two together, two together. And then I'm back at the beginning. I'm going to slip stitch that to close it. I went around the post of one of those stitches. I already know I'm going to have a hard time. We see that's all empty. I'm going to have to. Fluff his butt a little bit, get some fluff in there. And then I'm gonna tie that off. See, that's flat. I needed more stuffing. Try to get that stuffing towards her booty. towards her booty. Billy. Now, what did I do? I'm just going to weave that in. I don't really need to show you how to weave it in, but she is done. We did it! We made a strawberry bee. Strawberry bees forever. I still need to work on her, her shaping a little bit. It's hard because she, she's totally understuffed. She's totally understuffed, but what I have to do. She's done. And she's definitely bigger than the yellow eye. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial on how to make little fuzzy bees. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope my mood didn't like taper off too much during the end. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.